pleased to have Carl E. Walter with me to talk about the Farmington Canal. You're going to tell us so much about the Farmington Canal that we're going to be wanting to go visit all of it. How did you become an expert on this? Well, in 1992, I saw parts of the remains of the canal, which are still evident in the northern part of the state. Which one's from New Haven all New the way New Haven, to? actually, to Northampton. Mass. But, but through Granby. And uh, in Granby, you can still see parts. But while the uneducated person may look at them and think they were built by nature, uh, somebody else might look at them and think they were done by man. It's a little bit hard to tell in some places because they've been almost 200 years since they were built. So here's part of the Farmington Canal. What, what are we looking at there, Carl? This is the remains of Hopbrook Arch uh, in Simsbury. Now, Hopbrook uh, runs across Route 10 uh, down by Ensign Bickford. And this is the only surviving arch on this particular brook. That's the downstream end of an arch uh, which wow. was connected to a tunnel which ran towards us 110 feet to another arch which is collapsed in the 1955 flood. Now this started to be built in 1825. In 1825. Through 1835 took about 10 years or so to build? Uh, yes. Uh, it was actually completed in 1834 but they were short of water in Massachusetts so it took another year to get the water sure. from a poorly sited dam all and, the way to Northampton. And it was built for commerce, is that correct? Who, uh, New Haven business guys got together and they said let's build yeah. this? Uh, basically in those days Connecticut had two capitals, Hartford and New Haven. And they were competing uh, to see who was going to be first in population and wealth and ultimately in power. The way to get to this is trade and commerce. And Hartford, of course, is located on the Connecticut River where ocean-going ships can tie up and take advantage of the trade from northern New England. New Haven on Long Island Sound has a merchant fleet that trades worldwide but has no access to the interior. Indeed, New Haven's merchants, when they look north, they see it costs as much to send a barrel of fish to Farmington as it does to send to London, England. Wow. So since there's this competition going on and, and rivalry between them, they, the, the leaders, the business leaders in New Haven decided that they would finance and build a canal that would run from Long Island Sound to Northampton. Northampton was no accident uh, because there the canal would touch the Connecticut River and of course, they would try to siphon the trip, the, the trade and commerce from northern New England that was going to Hartford and Middletown and uh, take it right down to New Haven. Now, what are we looking at here, Carl? Those are uh, the last surviving uh, piers of the Farmington Aqueduct, number four, five, and six. There were originally six. This is a good picture because it's in color. It's one of the last pictures that Mr. Charles Rufus Hart ever took. He wow. finally converted from black and white to, cur to color. And this was taken perhaps a month before the 55 hurricane, which wiped out the structure entirely. And Mr. Hart died a few months later. Now, this was all built by man and animals. Absolutely. Correct? No power at all. How hard must that have been? For them, it was pretty, pretty usual work. They worked long hours, long days through the seasons, um, and you know, working without power was no problem since they had no, no familiarity with it at all. It was, now, I just want to ask you, the Farmington Canal didn't have a long life because of the railroad that came in, is that correct? Uh, partly that. Uh, basically, this whole project was ill-conceived. Um, it was built by people who were born and brought up in the 18th century and they were thinking what had happened in England they were thinking you get a get around the world by the wind blowing in your sails and and this kind of thing canals were just coming into vogue in this country the Erie Canal had just been finished and everybody wanted to build a canal since it was a very good way to have smooth reliable transportation Unfortunately, uh, they sighted this thing from New Haven Harbor aiming at northern New England without thinking too much about the fact that, one, there's not too much in northern New England in the way of trade and commerce. As the railroads find out when they replaced the canal, they had the same problem to a degree. 
The other big problem was that at this particular time, in the early Republic, 1820 or so, the colonial patterns of north-south trade are beginning to change with the opening of the Erie Canal and the Old Northwest to east and west. And so that the real bulk of trade and commerce is now going 90 degrees away from where this thing is built. But again, nobody knew at the time, and they sort of had to learn as they went along. It was a tremendous engineering feat. It's almost 100 miles along, along when you count its feeders. Uh, it's built on 61 different levels. It has all kinds of engineering structures which are built in wood and stone, uh, and rather crude stone at that, because this is financed by the merchants in New Haven. Both states worth. There was no capital in western Massachusetts to support this because the capital in Boston felt that this canal would feed the port of New York, which mm -hmm. rightly, they were right, it would. So uh, New Haven's merchants ended up, after the Massachusetts contractors went bankrupt in financing the whole thing. Now, when you think in those days there were only 6,000 people in New Haven, this is quite a thing. And it is all done out of the capital that those merchant ships were bringing back. Um, what is left of the Farmington Canal now? What does it look like now when we look at New Haven all the way to Northampton? What's left of it? It depends where you are. In New Haven itself, very little except uh, a little stretch where the Greenway comes down as far as uh, State Street, more or less. Um, that is a ditch which originally was a stream that ran along the east side of New Haven Colony. When the canal came, there was great competition in the city to see whether it would be used the east branch of the stream or the west branch of the stream. They finally picked the east branch and they stepped it down uh, like steps in five locks from, this, from Hamden uh, down through the city of New Haven to the basin in Long Island Sound. Then when the railroads came, they took the steps out and made it into an inclined plane and widened it considerably. So while we're virtually a stone's throw from the canal where we're sitting, uh, you'll find nothing of it to the east because it was turned into a railroad and then totally widened so that it's five or six tracks wide where the canal would be less than half a track wide. Now in Hamden, you can walk it, you can bike it. Northern Hamden, Southern Hamden has been obliterated since probably well, certainly there was nothing much there in the 18 or the 1930s when Mr. Hart was taking his pictures. Uh, south of the center of Hamden, even then there was very little, uh, except for a couple of large arch culverts, which have since been dismantled. But in southern Hamden, uh, there's been nothing for a long time, the same as, as in New Haven. Carl, why did you get so involved in the canal? Why are you such an authority on this? What was it about this project that just jazzed you so you had to know so much about it? Well, it's there. And the deeper you get, <laughs> the deeper you get, the deeper you, uh, <laughs> the more and you have to go. And this all the time. That, and we used to do bus tours when Ruth was alive, uh, all day bus tours uh, from. Your uh, companion. Yeah. We'd start in uh, Cheshire and work our way up to the state line of the Congamon Ponds. Um, but, you know, the more you f look, the more you see. And my goal at that point, and still is, is to get everything that everybody has about the canal and to put it into my computer. I've been doing this for almost 25 years. Wow. I have almost 2,000 pictures and 2,000 historical documents so that as a source of information on the canal, instead of going to Northampton or New Haven or Southwick or wherever, uh, it's in my computer because and can be touched. Because history is important to you. Yeah, yeah. basically, uh, I have one of Mr. Hart's maps from 1895, wow. uh, which he plotted the canal on, and I use this as a backdrop for my computer presentation, and you can touch the different parts of the map and bring up what it looked like, what it does look like, and all the historical documents that go with that site. Now there are now maps that you can get through the Simsbury Free Library of New Haven, Hamden, Cheshire, Southington, Plainville, Farmington, Avon, Simsbury, and Granbury. Nine maps, right. And each one of these little maps has just so much history in them. This is all you, correct? That's all me. That's not me. This is well. You, we can't expect you to draw maps too. But <laughs> no, I mean I did draw the maps. But the thing is, this is based on an 1828 map, which uh, was done of the canal. It was the engineering map for the canal, uh -huh. which still exists in Hartford, and there's a copy of it in Canton. Um, and what I've done basically is to take the 
earliest accurate topographical maps that I could find and take the 1828 data, which is the gold standard for the Farmington Canal. I mean, if, if you see it on that map and you go out there in the field today, if it still exists, it'll be there. So I transferred all that data to the uh, to the topographical Why maps. Why is it important for us to know about this canal? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's part of our history, right? It certainly is. It's, it's part of uh, dealing in a state that needed trade and commerce and maybe ill worked out and it didn't last forever, but just the structures that are along the way are amazing. They are, and uh, they were built at great, you know, great expense, great labor, and uh, some of them still exist. There what, is a, Which thing still exists that you find so fascinating along the canal? Well, most of it these days is, is just canal bed because mm -hmm. most of the structures have fallen into disrepair or been dismantled How or recycled or whatever. How deep was the water at one point? Four feet. Just four feet four everywhere, feet. four feet. The ditch is six feet deep and the, the uh, water is four feet deep. It's 20 feet wide at the bottom and tapers out to about 36 feet wide where it's four feet deep and then so it keeps going another up two more feet till it's about 45 feet wide. So small wide boats down. went up. And where did they go? Where the, did they the drop canal off? boats are roughly 75 feet long by tw by 12 feet wide, long and thin, and they draw four feet of water, carry up to about 20 tons, like a modern trailer truck uh -huh. or tractor trailer truck. Uh, and they transported what? Everything and anything, uh, basically uh, commodities, farm produce, timber, um, shingles, firewood, bricks. Copper ore, you name it, going down towards the coast and coming up was anything that was coming in from the outside, including coal and flour and sugar and salt, um, all kinds of groceries, nuts and cloves. Anything they had in New Haven could be put on the canal boat and taken to a little town like Southampton, which, wow. for instance, is, is south of Northampton and about 10 miles from the river and for 150 years had been supplied from goods on the Connecticut River. Biggest mystery about this, as people dig into the maps and find out what happened back in 1825, what's the biggest mystery to the Farmington Canal that you found? Or maybe still trying to investigate as to why they built this or why they did that? Um, I don't think there are too many mysteries like that. My biggest mysteries are things which were too common to be recorded. People didn't write them down because it was common knowledge. Then they went and died. <laughs> I know we where all, they're buried, the but I can't it. talk yeah. to them. Right. And so the, a, a lot of these things, uh, for instance, the, the aqueduct in Southampton in Massachusetts, I know how long it should be, and I know how long they measured it, and I, but I don't know what they built. And there's no way to know what they built because they took it apart and moved it when the railroad went in. So that all the stones are there, but they're in a different place. And this happens a lot. Well, Carl, uh, I want to thank you for coming on and kind of whetting our appetite about the Farmington Canal. And we can go and read all of this history because of you. And thanks for keeping history alive. Well, thank you. Spend all night kissing and the bombs is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep going to the grocery store of a mind. Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.